All right, so we are going to do our final session of the day. Does everybody have a glass of champagne in front of them? Okay, and Nancy's double fisted. All right. I'm not responsible for your drive back to Rochester. Okay, so what we're going to do, this session is Napoleon Hill's formula in 30 minutes a day to any goal you want in less than 12 months. So I'm going to do something from NLP that we didn't get to, which is called future pacing. So what you're going to do is, and I'm going to anchor something for you right now. You're going to hold your champagne, close your eyes. Picture the number one goal you would like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Imagine yourself 12 months from now having achieved it, and either paint yourself a picture of what that would look like, hear yourself saying what you would say when you've achieved it, or feel what it would feel like to achieve that goal. Everybody got it? Drink your champagne. You don't have to try the whole thing. Okay. So you now have a visual auditory or kinesthetic anchor and a champagne anchor. And I future pace by having you imagine your life as if you had already gotten something and experience what that was like. So now those feelings will all be associated to what I'm about to show you on how to do it. And then I expect that's a champagne from you in 12 months. Okay. Does everybody have something physical to write with? Yes. Okay. So you're going to put your pens down because I'm going to tell you the formula. Then I'm going to break it down. Make sense? Okay. So the first thing you're going to do, no note taking, you're going to listen or vision, whatever your senses lead with. Okay. So this is the Napoleon Hill formula. I know I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life. Second, I know that the dominating thoughts of my mind will eventually reproduce themselves in outward physical action and gradually transform themselves into reality. Therefore, I will devote myself 30, 20 minutes a day upon the task of thinking of the type of person I intend to become, thereby creating in my mind a clear mental image of that person. Third, I know through the principle of auto-suggestion that any desire I persistently hold in my mind will eventually seek expression through some practical means of attaining the object back of it. Therefore, I will devote myself 10 minutes daily to the development of self-confidence. Fourth, I have written down a clear description of my definite chief aim in life, and I promise to never stop trying until I have developed sufficient self-confidence for its achievement. Fifth, I know that no wealth or position can long endure unless based upon truth or justice. Therefore, I will engage in no endeavor which does not benefit all whom it affects. I will succeed by attracting to myself the forces I wish to use and the cooperation of other people. I will induce others to serve me by my willingness to serve others. I will cause others to believe in me by my willingness to believe in them and in myself. I will eliminate envy, hatred, selfishness, and cynicism by developing a positive attitude towards all humanity because I know that a negative attitude can never bring about success. I will write down this formula, commit it to memory, and repeat it aloud once daily in the full faith that it will gradually affect my thoughts and actions until I become a self-reliant and successful person. That's the formula. So, we're now going to go through it and break it down. Okay. It presupposes a whole lot of things. I know I have the ability to achieve my object and my definite purpose in life. Presupposes that you believe in yourself, which you have to do, otherwise you're not going to get out of bed. And it presupposes you have a definite purpose in life or a goal in the next 12 months. If you don't have one, if you just want more money, I'll give you a dollar and we'll call it a day. Or you want to lose some weight, I'll have you run up and down the stairs a few times and you're good. So you need a definite purpose in life. Um, I promise to here and now, um, I promise to here and now render persistent and continuous effort towards such achievement. It means you're capable of sticking with it. If you give up in a month, 
this doesn't work and I have no liability for you not doing it. Second, I know, one second, I know that the dominating thoughts of my mind will eventually reproduce themselves in physical action and gradually transform themselves into physical reality. You are what you think about. There's a saying in the coaching industry, you know, you're the average of your five closest friends, or the five people you spend the most time with, or your income is the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so we all need better friends. Mm -hmm. um, so that, your dominating thoughts of your mind. So think about what you think about. Unlike what Obama would tell you, you are responsible for your lot in life. <laughs> you put yourself here, wherever here is. So if you want to put yourself somewhere else, you, no one's going to do it for you. You've got to do it. And what you think about the most is actually what happens. Now, there is a very famous movie that I will slightly disagree with that came out a number of years ago called The Secret. Everybody familiar with The Secret? Yes. Okay. And The Secret said, paraphrasing down, just put it out there and it'll come to you. Uh, it's funny. There was a very funny parody on Saturday Night Live of Oprah where Maya Rudolph was playing Oprah, and she had someone playing the woman who wrote The Secret. And Maya, I will do a lousy Oprah, but Maya's Oprah was like, just every time, like throughout the little five minute skit, like she would say, Secret! And the crowd would go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she does. So Maya said, the secret works. So Maya is Oprah says, the secret worked for me. I had a dream last night that I wanted to fly above the city of Chicago in a hot air balloon, eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And this morning when I woke up, I told my assistant, I want to fly above the city of Chicago <laughs> in a hot air balloon, eating peanut butter and jelly. And she found a hot air balloon company, and she made me peanut butter and jelly, and I got in it, and now I've got peanut butter stuck to the roof of my mouth. Secret! <laughs> Is she didn't just picture it, she did something. She told somebody else to make it happen. But she did something to make it happen. So unlike the secret, which said just visualize it and it'll happen, I don't think your ship will come in. You have to actually swim out and go get it. You actually have to work your butt off to make the Ferrari a reality, or whatever it is that you want. Uh, so what do you think about? Start listening to your or watching or feeling your own thoughts. What are you thinking about the most? And if you're thinking about a scarcity consciousness, oh my god, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough clients. Well, that's probably why you don't have enough money or enough clients. You have to think from an abundance mindset. There's more than enough to go around. Prosperity is my divine birthright, or whatever you want to say to yourself. Um, third, I know through the principle of auto-suggestion. This is gar like a computer. Garbage in, garbage out. You put crap in your head, you're going to get crap. My um, dear friend and employee, um, Rebecca Cronin, who is here, got my wife hooked on a game called Candy Crush. Some of you have played this. So to bond with my wife, well, she plays it while she's nursing our daughter. So to bond with my wife and be a good husband, I started playing Candy Crush. And I'm now stuck at level 23. I gave up because I realized all the time I was spending on Candy Crush, I could have used to do something better with my life. So for a little bit of time, Candy Crush was a dominating thought in my head. A stupid freaking level, I can't get past this level. And I'm stuck at that level, are you surprised? Because I kept thinking I'm stuck at this level. If I had said, how do I get past the level, I might have gotten past it. A more empowering question. So, principle of auto-suggestion. I know through the principle of auto-suggestion that any desire I persistently hold in my mind will eventually seek expression through some practical means of attaining the object back of it. Practical means of getting it. Third, I know... Did I want some more champagne? See, it's a dot. I keep seeing it. It's an anchor. Um, okay, so I'm one, that was one, that was two, that was three, four. Um, I have written down, written down, a clear description of my definite chief purpose. It means you have to write it down, and you have to have a clear one. And there has to be a deadline on it. Like, I want to generate a million dollars in revenue by 12, 31, 13. That's a clear description. And then I have to write, how am I going to do it? But if you're... Why, if you're a re wise girls, if your reason why for accomplishing something is powerful enough, the universe will, you will always find a how. I had a client when I was a financial planner who came in um, and said, 
I, what, I said, you know, we were talking about what is your goal? I want a million dollars. I said, okay, what is that for? Just to have it. I said, is this retirement? Is this kids' education? Oh no, I'm single, I'm not married, no kids. I just think it'd be cool to have a million dollars. No surprise, he hasn't done what he needs to to get to a million dollars. Because his I just think it'd be cool is not a powerful, compelling reason why. I wouldn't get out of bed in the morning for it, it'd just be cool. It has to consume you. Uh, okay, so I know, uh, I've written down a clear description of my definite chief aim in life, and I promise I will never stop trying until I've achieved sufficient self-confidence for its achievement. It doesn't say I have to make enough money to buy the house. So I have to have enough self-confidence to buy the house. Because the money comes after your belief, your confidence in it. You won't, um, for the people in the room who coach entrepreneurial women, um, and I've had a few, Coach it as, as clients, like not any other way. Um, but, <laughs> see, that's a champagne talk. So, more champagne, please. So, one of the issues I found most prevalent, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, is that they don't ask for the money. They have hang ups based on society's crap about women that they don't say, give me the damn money, write the check. They leave it up to the customer to write the check. You have to actually get them to give you the money or whatever it is. Um, I will, fifth, I know that I will um, know a wealth or position can long endure unless based on truth or injustice. I will engage in no endeavor which does not benefit all whom it affects. So, you have to actually do some good for people. Yes? Can you repeat that last sentence? I know that, um, I know that no wealth or position can long endure unless based upon truth and justice. I will engage in no endeavor which does not benefit all whom it affects. That's you have to be doing good. That's <laughs> yes, so that's why my idea of your shelfhelp.com, you're not going to open the damn product anyway, send me the money, won't work. I might get a few people, but it's not a sustainable business model. It's not benefiting anybody except me for them sending me money. It's taken anyway. It's taken anyway, shelfhelp.com. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she looked. She looked. She went on GoDaddy for GoDaddy app. Okay. Um, I will uh, I will succeed by attracting to myself the forces I wish to use in the cooperation of other people. I will induce others to serve me by my willingness to serve others. Paraphrasing, well, Zig Ziglar would paraphrase it decades later. You can help. You can get whatever you want if you will help enough other people get what they want. Um, I will eliminate. Uh, I will believe. I will cause others to believe in me because I will believe in them and in myself. Nobody's going to believe in you unless you believe in you. So for example, I have a client who's a, also a professional magician, except he's much, much better than I am, and like designs tricks for people like David Blaine, and is absolutely amazing. Yes, see, you know. Okay, so he had an issue where he was performing, and he will tell you this, he was overweight, and he was performing, and some guy, he was lecturing to other magicians, and some famous magician, who I won't name, came up to him and said, how can I take you seriously if you don't even love yourself? And my client was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're significantly overweight. You don't even respect yourself enough to get in shape and be healthy. How am I going to give you any money? How am I going to help you at all? Now that's pretty harsh for a complete stranger to walk up and tell you that. If my client was a different person, he may have punched that guy in the face and then sat on it. Uh, but <laughs> he isn't. He is. He was like, "Oh my God!" It finally clicked, and he dropped like a hundred pounds. And the next time I saw him was after he had lost all the weight. I was like, "Oh my God! You look amazing! What happened?" And he's like, "Let me tell you. It's an interesting story." So I will induce. So I will believe in others. I will cause others to believe in me by my willingness to believe in them and in myself. Um, I will eliminate envy, hatred, selfishness, and cynicism by developing a loving attitude towards all humanity because I know that a negative attitude can never bring about success. Have you ever noticed that the negative Nellies in your office, if you have one, aren't the people who are the top producers? They're in the bottom 99%. They're not in the 1%. Because you can make excuses and you can make money, but you can't make both. Um, I will write down this formula. So you're going to write it in a minute. I will commit it to memory, and my memory expert client, Dave Farrow, is going to, after we write it down, is going to give us a couple memory tricks on how you memorize it. Um, and I will repeat it aloud once a day, 
in the full faith, you know, that it's going to work. Because it will. And when Dan taught this to me, he said, I'm not giving you, a, this is before, he's like, I'm not giving you a PowerPoint. You have to write it down. And if you ever teach it to anyone, you will know when you are ready to teach it. And if you ever teach it to anyone, you have to make them do it the same way I made you do it. If you just email it to them, it won't work. Copying and pasting it onto your desktop every day doesn't count. You have to actually write it down now and then read it while well, memorizing it. Okay. So, you've got to write down a clear description of your definition of aim in life. And this is a 30 minutes a day routine. It's 20 minutes a day on thinking of the type of person you intend to become, and 10 minutes a day on the development of self-confidence, and you're going to read your formula. And 12 months from now, we're going to have more champagne and celebrate the goal that you just got. So it all boils down to this. That your business or your life or whatever it is. Um, it's funny, I read this somewhere, I texted it to my brother-in-law who said, Tony Robbins just said this on Dr. Oz two minutes ago. And I wasn't watching Dr. Oz. And the quote was, your business can only grow as big as you do. Your life can only get as big as you do. It's about the type of person you are and everything else will reflect that. With that being said, um, before Dave gives us um, his memorization, a couple of quick memorization tricks, next month is July 12th. This meeting will be July 12th at Salvatore's Italian Gardens. As you can see, we have outgrown this room. So it will be at July 12th from noon to 3. You must be getting bigger. We are getting bigger, yes, as a person, yes. There will be appetizers and desserts, too. The dinner, your waistlines will hopefully not get too much bigger. The content for next month. So, I have been working with a woman by the name of Sally Hogshead, who is the best-selling author and founder, best-selling author of the book Fascinate, and the founder of the Fascinate Marketing System. She did uh, all of this based on a personality test she created, the Fascinate Marketing Test. Now, unlike Myers-Briggs or other personality tests that might tell you how you see the world, Fascinate tells you how the world sees you, which is a marketer or a business owner is incredibly important. So I've had all of my employees taking it. Taking it myself has allowed me to resolve a number of conflicts that existed in my life because I didn't realize what the problem was. And I realized there are 49 personality types based on your primary trigger, your secondary trigger, and your dormant trigger. You'll learn all of this. We're going to be doing it next month. So the Fascinate Marketing System is what we'll be teaching highlights of. So it is composed of one, two, three, four, five, six binders, a bunch of DVDs, and CDs. I will be trying to boil down, as I drop it all, highlights of that into next month. That's going to be the first half. The second half is going to be ten, it's going to be seven hot seats, like you saw people coming up, 15 minutes each, where we're going to go over their fascinate score, and the group is going to work on making them more fascinating. But what you will also get if you participate in one of those hot seats is an hour of my time, based on my work with Sally, one-on-one, -on -one, working with you and making you and your marketing more fascinating. So, because of that, and the test also costs money. So everybody who comes, who is a paying, either a client of market domination or a paying guest, you will get free access to the test ahead of time so that you can come with your profile and learn about yourself and how to make yourself more fascinating to close more business. Um, the people who want to get a hot seat and an hour of my time and my team making you more fascinating, because it, we're taking our time to do that, that's going to cost $300. It's fully refundable if you're not happy, if you don't feel more fascinating in any way, shape, or form. Um, that also includes the test, the hour of the time, and a guaranteed hot seat. Now, I will tell you from work on my own fascination stuff, not only did it resolve some conflicts in my life, uh, it explained to me why I have attracted the employees I have. 
and which ones I need to hire because my personality type is the change agent. You'll learn what that means. My primary power trigger is power. My secondary trigger is rebellion. My dormant trigger is trust. So almost every single employee I have has a primary or secondary trigger of rebellion. We all like to shake up the status quo. That's why they work for me. And most of them have told me they could never go work anyplace else after working for me because a normal job just wouldn't cut it anymore. However, I'm missing the trust trait. It's not one of my primary or secondary triggers. So Kristen is my only employee with a trust trigger. I need to hire a whole lot more of her because it's what we are missing. We're busy shaking up the status quo and forgetting to do the trust stuff. Um, so in addition to that, um, it resolved several conflicts I was having with a local networking group that I was a member of um, because my power and rebellion wasn't working for people who were not power and rebellion, who didn't resonate with that. Um, it resolved a couple conflicts in my personal life and doing it online and making our marketing more fascinated tripled the traffic to my website in 30 days, which has resulted in a lot more stuff, which is all good. Um, so, if you want to participate, if you want to come, get the test and learn, no problem. If you want to participate in the special fascination consultation and get a guaranteed hot seat, let us know. Bruce will have my iPad cash register swiper thingy afterwards. That will be July 12th. Even if you don't participate in the hot seat in the one hour time, I guarantee you, you'll be more fascinating by the time you leave. Also, one thing you should know is it applies in your personal life too. You cannot tell my wife, but since I started doing this, she has told me I'm sexy more times than in the rest of our marriage. So it works at home too. You shouldn't do it for that reason, but it's an extra bonus. And then you can remember your last really good sexual experience. So it'll get your life. Totally a reason. It's totally a reason. Why not? What's your Yes. What are your motivations? So, July 12th. 12 to 3 at Salvatore's. Um, before we wrap up, we're going to give Dave a couple minutes to tell you faster ways to memorize the formula you just wrote down. Yes, sir. Who wrote this 100 years ago? Napoleon Hill. And was the author of Thinking Grow Rich. Another the great inspiration for that is Wallace, Wallace Waddles. Yes, who was yes. the science of becoming. Yes. Yes. Very older type language. Great. So, um, yeah, those of you guys who don't know me, I'm the memory guy. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records for memory, and I sell products internationally and been on TV and stuff. Uh, really great, great fans of Seth's work. Um, so, a couple of tricks on how to memorize this. It really does make a difference uh, if you use a strategy instead of just you know, effort. Uh, first of all, repetition does not work. It bores the brain. So you may be able to remember something like cramming for a test, but with you know, the studies show within three days repetition usually skewers the information. You'll start moving lines around and it won't make sense. So repetition is not a good strategy. What you want to do is, like as we talked about with your different modalities, you want to try to visualize the information. Even if you're not a visual person, we don't have a word in the English language that says to, uh, to uh, imagine something in your mind's eye using all of your senses. I think centralization would be the closest, that sounds dirty. So, uh, so I might say visualize it or picture it, but you know, if you're a kinesthetic person, you put yourself in the image, since we were talking about kinesthetic and auditory and such. And if you're auditory, you imagine all of your senses. But essentially what you want to do is go through the material maybe once or twice and highlight what are called the key words. These are the words that remind you of the whole sentence. So for friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears, just the word ears might remind me of that whole thing because it's an iconic phrase. But if I was reading some technical manual, maybe I'd have to pick three or four words because I need more to remember that phrase because I'm less familiar with it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So everybody is going to pick different key words, but you know, you'll have some similarities. The first few lines in there, the word ability and object and things like that. So what you want to do is find a way to visualize these. Most of the time we pick a rhyme. Uh, so something like uh, ability, you might think of a duck's bill, something that sounds like a bill, and that'll remind you of the word ability. Now I know it sounds weird to talk like this, you'll have weird silly images in your head of ducks on top of a table on a ski lift, or weird, it'll make really weird imagery, but when you go through it a couple times, you'll remember every single word effortlessly, and you'll find that it's been an hour you've gone through tons of material and committed it to memory. The neat thing is your brain is more powerful than you think. You don't have to get every word. Don't try to focus on the thes, the ifs, the ands, the buts. 
uh, focus on those big words, and the other ones will come along for the ride, as long as you make it interesting. Is that uh, yes. a good tip? Very helpful. Thank you very All much. Right. Awesome. And where can they get more if they want more? Oh, yeah. Uh, just uh, DaveFarrow.com, but something that's a little easier to remember is YourMemorySucks.com. <laughs> All right? <laughs> and he'll show you, it's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault, because your memory sucks. <laughs> and he'll show you how to make it not suck. Um, okay, so um, we are done for today. That is your content. I hope you got a lot out of it, and I'm more importantly, I hope you apply it. Um, and then we will see you all on July 12th. Remember, if you bring someone with you on July 12th who has never been here before, um, they obviously have to be a salesperson or a professional business person or an entrepreneur or something. That has to be, it has to be worth their while to attend. Um, but if you bring them, then you or them get in free. So thank you very much, and bye Facebook people, and we'll see you in July.